John Roberts and Amy Coney Barrett sided with the three progressives on the Supreme Court yesterday to uh, order Texas to take down its, its uh, razor wire along the Texas-Mexico border, or more specifically, to allow federal agents to come into the ter- area, and they themselves want to remove it. A lot of rage at Amy Coney Barrett and John Roberts for this, particularly Amy Coney Barrett. I, I can't get mad at a woman who voted to get rid of Roe v. Wade. I may disagree with her, but she has a plausible basis. Now, uh, if you read the media reports, they say that four justices dissented, uh, Kavanaugh, uh, Thomas, Alito, and Gorsuch. And they did, in the uh, general order, say they would have voted otherwise, but there was no dissent. There wasn't even really an opinion. It was just a a very specific order. And I, I at least want to try to explain this to you, whether you or I agree with it. I can kind of guess why Roberts and Barrett went with the progressives to begin with. And again, there's no there is no written long form uh, court decision here. It's just an order. A lot of the media got this wrong in their reporting of it. Let me explain to you why I suspect why I suspect they went with um, the 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 progressives. The case is ongoing. And so what the decision does is it allows federal agents to come into the territory until the case has actually been decided. So it's a temporary thing. Maybe they'll make it permanent. But when you read Article 1 of the Constitution, uh, it sets out a few parameters. One of the parameters is that it is the Congress of the United States that sets immigration law, not the states. It's the federal government through the Congress. Two... It is Congress and the executive branch of the federal government that are to protect states from invasion, not the states themselves. The states can take some limited action. But then three, is the mass wave of illegal immigrants coming into this country technically an invasion? Words matter and words with legal definitions matter in the same way the left says what happened on January 6th is an insurrection, it wasn't really. And it is entirely plausible for the Supreme Court, based on current definitions of words, for the majority to say this mass wave of illegal immigrants is not an invasion as referenced in the Constitution of the United States. An invasion tends to be an armed takeover, an attempted armed takeover of the country. These are people coming here for work, we suppose. Therefore... The none of the conditions apply for Texas to defend itself in the way Texas is doing it. Now, you and I can think that's wrong, but you should at least understand it. And I am I am extrapolating based on uh, my background in constitutional law. I was a lawyer. My highest grade in law school was constitutional law, and it's something that I dabbled in as, as a lawyer. I at least understand the parameters here. And so the parameters are that the federal government, not the states, handle immigration policy. The federal government, not the states, protect the states from invasion. And while states have limited authority to protect themselves, it does have to do with hostile invasion. We can presume from the history and language of the Constitution the word invasion, not from illegal aliens coming across the border, which is an immigration issue that is the purview of the federal government, not the states. You can say it's wrong. You can do all that. Don't yell at me. I'm trying to explain it to you. So Amy Coney Barrett and John Roberts sided with the progressives, at least for now, while the case is pending. The problem here is that this exacerbates the issue for the Democrats at a time uh, illegal immigration is now a greater issue, according to the public, than inflation. The mess at the border is now on the forefront of people's minds more than inflation. And Joe Biden gets popularity numbers in the teens when it comes to immigration. This complicates things for Joe Biden in a very interesting way. Uh, The only time Joe Biden has cared about the border is caring about getting rid of the razor wire so illegals can flood the country. And the Supreme Court says, well, he's got the right to be able to do this, so let him have it. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're pouring this in to Joe Biden's lap, who is unwilling and incapable of dealing with the issue, And then you got that idiot Kamala Harris out there who just keeps making matters worse. 
She's interviewed on CNN. Listen to this uh, bit of conversation about immigration. Well, so there is no question that our immigration system is broken. And so much so that we, as the first bill that we offered after our inauguration, was to fix the immigration system, which included what we must do to create a pathway for citizenship Mm -hmm. and to put the resources that are needed into the border. But sadly, people on the other side of the aisle have been playing politics with this issue. The solutions are at hand. And, you know, gone are the days, sadly, where a President Bush or John McCain understood that we should have a bipartisan approach to fixing this problem, which is a longstanding problem. But what are those solutions? The solutions include putting resources at the border to do what we can to process people effectively and putting in place laws that actually allow for a meaningful, meaningful pathway to citizenship. So amnesty for who? The people who've been here for a long time or the people coming across now? It's a complicating factor here. Now, they say the people who've been here for a long time, the so-called dreamers, they call them, focus group, that word, dreamers, the kids whose parents brought them over here when they were young, now they're adults and they're still illegals. But can we really trust the Democrats not to try to give it to everybody? It's part of the problem here. We should deal with this in an incremental solution. We should deal with this in an incremental way. But what's notable is the Democrats don't want to deal with it incrementally, secure the border to stop the flow, and then deal with the people who are here illegally presently, recently, who should be deported, and then deal with the people who maybe you do now that the border is secure, want to give them amnesty because they've been here all their lives, really the only country they know. You could deal with it incrementally. The Democrats refuse to deal with it incrementally. It's an all-or-nothing approach for the Democrats, but to a degree, it's an all-or-nothing approach for the GOP as well. We should all, at a minimum, even John Fetterman agrees, secure the border, build a wall, keep the people from coming. Deal with everything else afterwards, but secure the border first. Even John Fetterman agrees. Apparently, you put a suit on that man, and and he becomes conservative. Not really. Like Joe Manchin, he's going to disappoint us, but he's right on this issue. There are too much politics when it comes to this issue, and the obvious right thing to do is secure the border and then deal with everything else. But you can't deal with everything else until you secure the border because if you have this massive flow of people coming across the border and you got people like Kamala Harris saying amnesty, well, that just complicates the mess, and suddenly you got a bunch of document forgers out there forging the documents to prove these people have been here for quite a long while. And don't forget the gotaways. We have a massive number of people who have gotten away from the feds. We don't know who they are. We know they're in the country. Maybe they're terrorists. Maybe they're people who just want jobs, but we don't know who they are. Because we don't know, we haven't documented them, so they're the ones who can say, well, I've been here the whole time. Real problems on this issue. And Kamala Harris going on television talking about amnesty isn't helping. By the way, have you noticed they're elevating her profile? They want Kamala. She's been out there aggressively on abortion. She's now out there on illegal immigration. They continue to elevate her profile in the campaign. They've decided in some way, shape, or form she's an asset. My theory. My theory. They're elevating Kamala Harris now to get her ready to take over. That's my theory. I think they've run the numbers. I I think they realize Biden's getting old. But I think they also know that they can't ditch Kamala Harris, so they got to set her up now to be the responder to Trump. they got to set her up and, and boost her profile. If Joe decides to step away, and I don't know that Joe will step away, but if he does step away, how are you not going to give it to Kamala Harris? Well, the way you avoid the fight is to build a profile now and give her some level of competence, surround her with people who can have her back. But the problem at the end of the day, as most Democrats have figured out, is Kamala Harris is the problem but they're going to make her take the lead on immigration, an issue on which the Democrats are losing handily because the American public, including a majority of Democrats now, want to secure the border. This is insanity, and the Democratic leadership is governed by their progressive donors and not the actual Democratic voters who want the border secured as much as the Republicans.